when it's night, when it's day, we explore, we investigate. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is uh, Joe from EVPS Paranormal. Alex, uh, appreciate you helping me from uh, back home. No problem. Um, right now, I'm out at uh, McPherson Ridge on the Gettysburg battlefield. Um, I'm kind of going to do a little bit of driving around. I'm running out of time. Uh, a lot of this stuff out here, you're only allowed to be here, um, at least on the grounds or whatever, uh, from sunrise to sunset. So we've got a small window here. I kind of wanted to take you around a little bit to some of the cool places that I thought. Um, excuse the mess here. I got notes going on. I've got uh, a couple things here in the car with me. I'm running some uh, EGPs and stuff. So I got a lot of little stuff going on. I'm going to be doing some stopping here later. Um, so... I tried to get a secondary camera working, but, uh, you know, just like with everything else, uh, once you start trying to do something, it always screws up. So uh, I'm going to switch over to the other camera real quick, or I'm going to switch the view on this camera, and I'm just going to go out the, out the front of my uh, window here on the car, and I'm just going to drive around because right now we are at a place called McPherson's uh, Ridge or whatever. Um, this is a really cool spot. There's a cut. Uh, down by where the railroad tracks is at, where the Confederate soldiers had actually went down in there thinking that they would have uh, better coverage or whatever to uh, basically do the hide-and-shoot tactic or whatever on the Union soldiers. And basically they got trapped in there because it was too deep. Union soldiers come up on them and they just slaughtered them. I mean, it was like a bunch of them that just got slaughtered right, right here, right there. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and like I said, man, this place is massive. I mean... There's no way I can get as much coverage as I thought that I was going to be able to do by myself out here. This place is absolutely insanely huge. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of drive around a little bit and then I'll stop at a few key places. If you have any questions or whatever, just pop in here. Alex can help me field them or I'll, you know, if he tells me about them or whatever, I'll just pop on and try to give you what I got. So I'm going to switch the camera over right now. Uh, give me just a minute. So I'm going to switch it over to the back camera there you go so this is what you see or what i see while driving so i'm going to drive and like i said this is the part of mcpherson's ridge and as you can see all along the road down here there's monuments all over the damn place ohio dedicated stuff pennsylvania virginia there's so many uh dedications from all over the united states down here it is absolutely amazing um and this, this place it has a lot of, uh, sorry, I forgot to put my seatbelt on. It has a lot of uh, powerful energy here. You can just feel it when you're driving down the road. Um, emotional charge uh, is definitely what I would use to describe that. So I'm just going to kind of do my own thing here and just kind of roll around here. So if anybody has been here before, uh, you may or may not have seen it the way that I'm showing it to you. And I apologize if it looks different or if I'm missing something. I'm trying to be a little bit of in a hurry. Um, as you can see, look at the fencing on your left over here. That stuff is here everywhere. That, I mean, it, the fencing is just cool alone looking at it. All these cornfields and stuff. The pictures that I seen growing up, these cornfields weren't here. It was stuff like weed or whatever. I don't know. Obviously, I wasn't here. But uh, this is one super cool place. <clears throat> And as you can see, there's people's houses and stuff all around here. So it's kind of like in between everything. The place that we're staying at, I forget the name of the place, North Point Inn or something like that. As you can see, you got a gentleman down here uh, taking photos or whatever. Uh, there's just there's so many people doing the same thing that I'm doing. There's a guided audio tour where you can actually um, take your car like I'm doing right now. And it'll take you on an auto tour. And you drive along, it tells you the history, you stop at all these places. And seriously, even that is, is I don't know, an hour or so long or two hours long or whatever. 
And like, here's a monument right here. This is uh, the eighth New York Cavalry monument that we just passed. I'm gonna let this car go by in here. <clears throat> so, as you can see, all this stuff here is just littered throughout the damn place. It's so cool out here. Now, the place that I want to take you up here is called the Flame of the Eternal Light. This place, in my opinion, is really, really powerful. Uh, so, let me get by this one here, and I'll read you what this one is here. This is the 2nd Brigade, 1st Division Cavalry Corps uh, from 8th New York Cavalry, or 9th New York Cavalry, my bad. I'm trying to read quickly. So this uh, place that I'm taking you is called the Flame of the Eternal Light. Uh, there's a flame at the top of this that never never goes out. Uh, obviously, it's driven by some sort of propane or whatever. But the whole idea is the base of this monument is built by uh, uh, resources from the northern states, uh, granite and things like that. I forget exactly which ones donated where, but you got uh, the northern states donating um, – the bottom portion of it, and then the limestone portion on the top, which you can see off in the distance. I'm going to get closer. Uh, the limestone portion on the top is all Alabama limestone. So it, it very much signifies the, see how it says park closed, sunset, sunset, sunrise. The, uh, this monument signifies the reunification of the United States after the Civil War. And it's just a, it's a very powerful place. Like if you can see it, it's, it's Mahusha driving up to it. You see the flame at the top. Um, here's all the places that you can park. So I'm going to kind of take the camera out of the holder here so we can show you on the side there as I drive along, you know, very cool place. So got some cannons and stuff up there. I will walk over there eventually. Um, just again, trying to hurry up and get through here. Let me see if I can possibly zoom this. I don't know that I can. Okay, I guess I can a little bit, maybe. I don't know if it will zoom on your screen or not. I apologize, guys. <clears throat> this is a super cool place. I walked up there. It's got uh, some etching and stuff on there. It says, Peace Eternal and a Nation United. So a lot of the stuff out here that you'll see about the Civil War is all about being divided. Uh, this is when they got everything back together, you know, signifies unification of the the country after um, the Civil War. So I'm going to put you back in the holder here, and we're going to drive around a little bit more. Again, I apologize, guys. It's um, you know trying to save a little bit of time here and show you a few things that I thought were super cool. Clean my lens there. There we go. Okay, so down here, <coughs> excuse me, is a lookout that I thought was really really cool myself. Um, as you can see, we're driving down here. There's a couple farms. Uh, I see all the fencing there on my right now. And right up above where that car is at, you'll see a lookout tower. I went up here earlier, and I'm pretty scared of heights, but I went up here earlier, and I thought that it was really super cool because you can see the whole landscape over here. Um, it was just, you know, again, very powerful, very moving, uh, just very cool place. Now, I'm not going to go up there because I want to go back to where I was at, but that's kind of thing to focus and stay focused there. That's kind of uh, one of those places there that uh, if you get out this way, check it out. So I'm coming back over here because I want to go back down by McPherson's Ridge because the McPherson family farm still has one, um, they still have one, I don't know, it's like a barn or something that's left uh, on the property. There are all these windows up here so you can hear each other. And it's a really cool place. Um, so I'm kind of just trying to drive around a little bit, get back to it. So this is a one way that I came from, so I have to go down and around a little bit. I don't know that I can get there. Um, so I'm probably just going to have to go back the way I came, I assume. I don't know that I can get down the other way. And as you can see, this is all houses and stuff out here. Uh, nothing really too um, to see down this way as far as I'm aware of. So the auto tour ended back there and it kind of goes around. Let me see if I can turn this camera back around here. <clears throat> I 
Okay, there we go. So, as you can see, I'm driving down the road. I'm just going to kind of try to thumb my way back over that way. I think there's a couple uh, roads that I can take over there, but, I mean, there's no sense in uh, showing you all that. Um, but this place, like I said, is so massive. It's, it's really cool to be out here. But literally, uh, I don't know, like th there was one part of the museum that we was in that was talking about how um, the Confederates, when they went to attack, their, their, uh, their line uh, was over a mile long. Just think about that a minute. That is insanely huge. Just think about that. It was over a mile long. I mean, when you think about war and you think about infantry and stuff charging at each other a mile long, I mean, that's insanely large length of, of people. That's a lot of people. Um, the first, was it the first day or total or whatever? I think it was like the first day there was like 16,000 wounded and dead or some, some crazy number like that. I honestly don't remember. Uh, all these facts have been thrown in my head here and it's, I'm trying to retain some of them, you know, cause it's, it, it's something I'm very interested in, but it's also very, uh, it's, it's a lot to take in. There's so much here. Uh, they do a very good job with the museums and stuff here. There's a national cemetery, all that stuff. I'm going to try to get out there tomorrow before we leave out. But again, this is, this is a lot to do out here. I didn't realize there was so much to do. Uh, I figured it would be just kind of like a small undertaking you know, a little bit of a, a mini type of a thing that I could do and go from there. But <clears throat> there's a lot to do that really is. Um, so it, it's hard to it's hard to describe the scope that you have um, out here. It really is. There's just so much stuff to do. So I'm coming up on what I think is the intersection to get back um, to McPherson's Ridge, which is where I wanted to go. Um, so I'm trying to figure out where I want to put my um, equipment at. So I got I got a night vision camera and stuff like that. I thought about leaving everything there, but there's so many people coming through. It's probably not going to be a good idea. Um, <clears throat> I'll drive around a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. I will drive around a little bit while I'm out here at night, but it's kind of hard to um, it's kind of hard to get into the places where like for example you've seen all the stuff uh, on um, you know most haunted or you know all these other shows and stuff and what you see on there is like you'll see pictures of cannons or whatever and then you'll see like these ghostly figures coming up and stuff <coughs> excuse me technically you're not allowed on them grounds at night so i'm not sure how they got permission because i've asked a couple times and everybody says no don't do that and i can see the police set up they, they set up little borders all over the place out here. I don't know how serious they are about it, but I'm not trying to ruin my vacation uh, and obviously something that I have a lot of respect and stuff for out here by just trying to, you know, get a little something for the channel. It'll have to wait, guys. I'm sorry. Um, so what I'm doing uh, now is I'm just kind of working my way back to – I'm pretty sure – let me go ahead and switch the camera. I'm pretty sure this is where I need to be at. So, again, I apologize for kind of fumbling around a little bit here, guys. But, you know, it's one of these things that you don't know that you – there we go. <clears throat> you don't know that you're getting it until you're getting it. And I apologize. I'm getting a lot of uh, text messages and stuff at the same time. So, you, you see we're coming up here on the right. It's the McPherson Family Farm. Um, not this first building here, but the second building is what's left. I think it's the only piece that's left of the original farm. That's part of the barn. Right there, we just passed it. <clears throat> and then once we turn left here, you'll see that that's where we started from when we started this live. Here. This is one really cool place that I just I just wanted to share that with everybody. I thought it was really cool. We're going to try to put together a little bit of a video out here. It may be a more of a... Um, more of a historical video with a little bit of paranormal um, probing or something like that mixed in because honestly, I don't know what I'm allowed to get into out here, um, what I can get accomplished, what I can't get accomplished. So we'll just have to kind of check all that stuff out. So right now 
while we're doing the live, I figured we would do a little bit of necrophonics work, you know, stuff like that while we're actually on the live. So we're here on location. I'm going to leave the camera here for now, but eventually I will switch the camera around so that you can see me. Uh, I, you know, not that you want to, but so this is our necrophonics app, and I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Okay, and as you can hear, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and set it down right here. <laughs> I'm setting it down close to the camera. That way, you can hopefully hear everything. I should also point then, out too that the phone doesn't have any servers. Uh, yeah, thank you. I so appreciate that, Alex. The, the phone doesn't have any service on it. It doesn't have anything connected to any phone or anything. So if if y'all are wondering how that worked, it basically works on nothing but the phone itself. Yeah, there's a um, there's a uh, the app that I downloaded. You know, it has a, a database of, of phenomes or whatever in it that it's supposed to string things together that uh, the undead or, or how you will will be able to use. And I, I think I just I just basically going to let it run here, and I'm taking notes at the same time, so I apologize. Um, I did bring my EMF, but here's the problem with my EMF. So as you can see, we're already in the caution. We're in the car. I got, you know, shit all over the place in the car here. I got you know, any modern car. You got like your OnStar stuff here. You got all your Bluetooth, whatever, shooting fireworks up your ass everywhere. So it's not going to be accurate in the car anyway. So I'm going to le leave that to when I actually get to walk out on the ground. Here. But we're going to ask a couple questions here um, and see what we get. My name is Joe. I'm here with EVPS Paranormal, and we are on a live stream here. So hopefully with all the um, internet communications and stuff, we can have somebody reach us. Um, I'm just looking to find out if there's anybody here to talk to me. I'm here at McPherson's Ridge. I've read all the stories. I've seen stuff in the museum today about the Confederates getting caught in what they call the, the pinch or the trap or whatever. Is there anybody here? As you can see, this is more of a hit and miss, guys. Um, so it is what it is. I'm just letting it run. Um, Alex, do you have any questions here while I'm here? Um, none that I can think of right right now. Okay. So McPherson's Ridge here. Uh, okay, for, for those of you that don't know about Gettysburg, let me stop this for a second. For those of you that don't know about Gettysburg, Gettysburg was, and this is the whole reason why I personally wanted to go here, it was the deciding point and moment in the Civil War. And what I mean by that was you had you had a, a Confederate president, you had a northern president, you know, the Union. Um, and they were, you know, locked in this, I guess you would call kind of like a stalemate. Uh, Grant was was uh, having victories here and there, that kind of stuff. Uh, still kind of fairly new. Um, but I think Meade was the general out here uh, that was in charge of most of everything, at least the first one anyway. Um, and then a lot of reinforcements, you know, came. Um, and general Robert E. Lee thought that he could, uh, he was having so much success driving North that this would be the one decisive blow that would ensure the Confederate victory for, you know, the whole entire war. So that's why Gettysburg became the place that it did, uh, and the big battle that it did because all these roads intersected in basically the town. And the reason that that was important was because the roads that intersected, they were all, they used them for reinforcements. So it was kind of like an easy access to just, you know, sweep everything in, which is exactly what both sides did. Um, we seen earlier today a, um, I forget what they call that thing, um, cyclorama or whatever the hell that thing is. It's basically an oil painting. Um that goes in a circle. You're, you're up in this this part of the uh, museum that is a massive room, 
and there's an oil painting just all around you that you know it, it goes around and you're at the top of the ridge <coughs> excuse me where the i guess the northern forces would be <coughs> sorry and you have um you have this oil painting that they they tell a whole story and they light up certain parts of it and stuff it's actually very neat it sounds kind of silly but it's actually very neat it's really cool we watched a little film and stuff that was narrated by Morgan Freeman and sponsored by the History Channel, which I thought was really cool. Uh, I like both of those very much. Um, so I thought that that was, uh, that was really cool. So that's why I wanted to stop here where I'm at. So we're going to go ahead and start the app again. Okay. So I'm going to ask a few questions. Again, if anybody has any questions, just chime in. Uh, send a chat, whatever. Uh, send us to our email. You, you know the email, paranormal one gmail.com. I'll try to get you on here either on this live stream or the next one. I did uh, a TikTok and Instagram earlier, so now I'm trying to mix it up and, and go with YouTube. Tomorrow I plan on doing some sort of Facebook live, so we're just kind of, kind of trying to mix it up a little bit and reach everybody. All right, so I'm with the union. Uh, I'm here against that that damn General Robert Lee. Who supports Robert Lee here? Okay, I think I heard something too. I do. I have to listen to this later, obviously. Uh, um. <coughs> Can you give me your name? My name is Joe. Okay, I just had a couple repeating Joe. Twenty sixteen, I think I heard listen, so Now, again, some of this stuff might be gibberish. Um, some of it might make sense, but later on, after we kind of look over everything, maybe it'll, maybe it'll do something, maybe it won't. <clears throat> okay, again, <clears throat> I'm with the Northern Army. I'm here to expel all you Confederates. What do you think about that? Mm, I don't know what that was. That <laughs> okay. Was weird. I heard that. Yeah, it was weird. All right, so <clears throat> the battery is getting low on this. Uh, I didn't charge it up again. I just figured I'd kind of stop out here. Uh, we're at 6%. So I'm probably going to go ahead and end that part here because uh, it, it, it's not, it's not going to last long. This is an old cell phone. So what I want to do now is I want to do a little bit of EVP work. Um, we're just going to write this down as the necrophonic. And then uh, we'll look at that later. And I'm going to get out and I'm going to actually walk around a little bit. I'm going to get down here to what they call the cut. Um, my wife and uh, my other son is with me, but they're not here with me. They're back at the hotel. We had a, a, a very long day of walking around and uh, we went through museums. Uh, we did this auto tour. So it was pretty tiring. I actually went back and took a nap. So, you know, I had a little bit of a rest and that's what they're getting right now. <laughs> so. I'm here by myself, obviously, because I wanted to come out here and do a little bit of probing. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do now. So I'm going to unhook everything here. And Alex, I, I assume that I changed my audio to, okay, I'll just leave it on the speaker phone. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and take the EMF meter. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, audio recorder, my JWIN that I have here. And I'm going to grab a couple of different things here. Uh, hopefully I don't drop everything like I just did and I'll lock the car up and we'll get out here and see what we can see. <clears throat>
Now, again, guys, this is uh, on a major road. So um, let me go ahead and switch the camera around here again so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Oops, it didn't switch for some reason. Camera facing back. There we go. Should have switched. There we go. Okay, so this is uh, West 30 or whatever, or Interstate 30, or however you, ha however you call that, whatever you say. So I got this uh, camcorder here. I'm going to kind of get it all set up real quick. Um, so, again, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, now is definitely the time. Because I have time to field them and look at everything. Okay, let me see where the record button is on this thing. There we go. So I'm going to be running footage on uh, both the live here and the uh, camcorder. I'm just trying to get enough for an actual uh, video at the same time. Thought this would be kind of cool to you know, do a little bit of uh, dual purpose uh, investigating here, if you will. And I know a lot of this stuff is going to be kind of hard to uh, to kind of see what I'm doing here. Again, I'm kind of hurrying, walking around, uh, so I'm kind of bouncing a little more than normal instead of uh, just taking my time and making sure that the uh, the video is nice and straight and everything. So uh, I apologize again, guys. Now, this part here that I'm referring to, the cut, this is it down here. This, to me, is very powerful. So, this is obviously where the railroad um, comes in, goes under this bridge, which is exactly what we're going to do. So, here is some of the monuments here that they've placed. And the charge made in this railroad cut, the second, I guess, uh, Mississippi, uh, R-E-C-T officers, whatever that would be, men and battle flag surrendered to the 6th Wisconsin. Loss in 6th whatever, killed 30, wounded 116, missing 22, aggregate 168. I don't know what that means. But, yeah, that is that's amazing to me, guys. I mean... 30 killed just because of this little pinch point here. And, I mean, let me get down here where I can kind of show you a little bit about it. Very cool. I mean, I say cool, but, you know, sad, cool, interesting. Um, you know, I, I'm sorry for my, my verbiage here. I don't mean any disrespect. So this is what they refer to as the cut. And as you can see, it really is just a cut where they cut it in for the railroad. So the Confederate had thought that that would be a great place to um, kind of do the sneak attack on the Union Army. So they come down, I assume, somewhere down through there, and they position themselves in here thinking that they'd be able to get up real quick, take shots, and then get back in the shelter. It completely backfired on them. So this is what they refer to as the cut. And obviously this is on the McPherson farm. Arms. So this is I think that's the full name of it. Very cool, very uh, interesting place. Um, so we're gonna come up under here, kind of see what we can see. There's a couple little markers and stuff I wanted to check out. I've seen them earlier when I was here. Okay, so here's the markers. LF 95th New York Infantry, I assume. I don't know. I don't know what these markings mean. Obviously, under this bridge, um, this would probably be a place that uh, I would assume uh, would be a great place for, for these guys to try and uh, do some kind of attack or sneak in or whatever. 
So this is exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to try to, I don't want to try to get down there because I mean, damn, I'm not that uh, graceful as I used to be. What I want to do is I want to set up an EVP session right here. So I'm going to set down my camera. Uh, if I, if it's okay, I'm going to sit down. So I have to hold the camera at the same time. Well, it's going to be a little difficult, but uh, we'll get it done. And then I'll get the device out and get it ready. So we're powering it on, as you can see. Okay, we're going to hit record. Now, I'm going to place this down here, and we're going to My name is Joe from Ohio, and I supported the North. Can you tell me what you were thinking getting into this cut? Are there any regrets you have since you lost this area? Was this not the battle that you thought you would be winning? We'll move around a little bit here, guys. Just kind of get a better vantage point if I can. There's the EVP device. So basically what I'm doing here, guys, is I've just come to pay my respects to everybody that died here, everybody that fought. I know it was a difficult time for our country, and I just kind of wanted to pay my respects and see things firsthand. Is there anyone here that would like to give me their name? Is there any messages that you did not get to deliver to your loved ones that you would like to be known? I've read a lot of books about letters from both sides, the Confederate and the Union, that never made it home, never made it to their intended loved one. Can you tell me about those? Do you like me being here? Does my presence anger you? I support and I am exactly the embodiment of the reunification of this country. Just like many people that are around today. Obviously, we wouldn't be here without the reunification. How does that make you feel? Okay, so obviously, obviously, guys, I'm trying to get uh, things rolling here. I'm doing a little bit of light provocation. This is my version of provocation. I don't do a whole lot of uh, uh, mean-spirited type tactics. So um, this is what I'm doing now, just kind of trying to provoke a little bit of a response. Um, it, again, in more of a, um, more of a respectful way, um, if that makes any sense. So. It's kind of my vibe. It's my way of doing things, and maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. I don't know. It's just the way that I do them. Okay, so one thing that we're going to try while we're here is I need to get both cameras situated, so I apologize about all the shaking. Okay, so we got our EMF meter, and as you can see, there is nothing on the meter. It is straight up safe. So what we're going to do 
if I can get it set up correctly here. I'm going to try to uh, pinpoint a couple areas here, see if I can uh, do a little bit of a sweep while we continue to run our EMF experiment, or I'm sorry, my EVP experiment. So I'm going to come out here just to see, you know, what's on this other side, and bam, we have another monument here. Okay, so let's check out this other monument. Again, we're allowing the EVP recorder to just sit there and record while we're doing this. So we're going to come out, still running our sweep, trying to see if anything uh, pops up, you know, kind of funny. 14th Brooklyn um, Regiment, I, I assume. I'm not really sure. Um, read a little bit of this here. On this spot at 10.30 a.m. July 1st, 1863, this regiment participate, participated in the repulse of Adams Mississippi Brigade and the capture of a large portion of that command took into the engagement 35, 3, 35S, whatever that means, officers and men and by the War Department record lost during the three days 217. I don't exactly know what that means, guys, but uh, go ahead and set this over here for now just to see if, you know, anything crops up over here. Now, again, if anybody has any questions or whatever, now is the time on our live. So kind of figured that this would be a really cool spot to see that. We're going to go ahead and leave that here for now, and we're going to kind of walk over here on the other side of the cut. Again, we're just kind of getting our bearings here, letting a few things run and roll. Try to see what we can see and be careful on this ledge here. That is a, a good drop. So as you can tell, I mean, this does look like it would be a easily defended area. And as you can see, if you look far enough in the background back there, you can see the flame of the eternal light way off in the background. But, um, you know, it's, it's not very far from this location. Uh, McPherson Ridge, there is the family farm, the one um, barn building that's still left standing. That's it right there. Okay, so... I'm going to kind of get this thing set up here. So I'm going to switch the camera around so you guys can still see me. So while I get everything set up, I'm setting the camera down on the monument. And what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to get the camera here set up to where it can do a little bit of recording because I'm going to go get the, uh, I'm going to go get the uh, audio recorder and I want to set it over here on the monument. So I'm going to try to get a couple things set up over here so I can do a little bit of light experimenting while I'm here at this location. And this is going to be a little bit of a pain because I don't have my stand with me. Not very prepared like I normally am. I apologize again, even though I'm doing that a lot. Okay, so I have that somewhat set up. Now, let's go ahead and switch this back over. And there we go. Kind of show you what I got going here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit my record here, get things rolling. Okay, so that is recording. And I'm going to place the uh, audio device over there for now I'm just going to go ahead and put the EMF down there in a place where you can kind of see it somewhat hopefully there we go so you can kind of see that a little bit while I go over here and recover the audio recorder so I know it's just me here by myself. Uh, hopefully you guys like this kind of stuff. Uh, 
you know, we couldn't get the entire team out here due to uh, work conflicts and things like that. So it is what it is. All right, so stop. There we go. So we stopped that recording. And we're just going to bring it over here before we restart and just give it a little break. And the whole time, we're just going to kind of talk about the union and how powerful the union was. And the union took out the mighty Confederate army and it started in this area. Robert E. Lee was taken down in Gettysburg. How does that make you feel? And then we're going to start our recording again. Going to set this down here on this monument. This monument was dedicated. Dedicated to the 14th Regiment NYSM. I'm not sure. I'm not a military guy, guys. I really apologize. Um, 2nd Brigade, 1st Division, 1st Army Corps. Now, the 14th Regiment New York State Militia entered the U.S. Volunteer Service April, what is it, 16th, 1861, participated in 22 engagements with the enemy and was discharged on expiration of term of service. Okay. And that was June 6, 1864. That's kind of cool. And as you can see, the entire time that we're, we're running any kind of experiments or whatever, we have an active live road here, Route 30 or Interstate 30 or whatever that is. It runs right through here. Uh, as you can see, you can see my car over there. So kind of cool place. I, I really, really am uh, very taken aback here. A lot of interesting things that I just honestly never, never thought would be here. Does anybody have anything that they want to tell me here? Maybe you're angry at my words. Uh, you don't like the fact that I supported the North. You don't like the fact that I, I symbolize the new reunif reunified country. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this. We'll check that recording out later. So I'll put this in my pocket so I don't lose it. Then we'll go ahead and collect our EMF as well. We're not really getting anything on that either. And we're going to go up here to the top before we run out of here, before we run out of time. So I hope you guys are enjoying my little live session here. Um, I know we haven't been on for a while. Had a lot of uh, life situations kind of kicking ourselves in the butt. But, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, when we do get a chance, we get out and we try to go as full force as we can, uh, which is what I'm doing here now. So I'm going to walk over this bridge and I really want to get on the other side, actually. And I just kind of want to show you just how deep this cut is, because just from a military standpoint, I mean, look at that. That just to me. That's a bad decision. You know what I mean? I can understand how you would think that would be a great place to perform. I don't know. I don't know what they call that, that sneak attack tactic or whatever. But obviously it was just very flawed. Everything about it was. So before we run out of time, I'm going to walk over here to these monuments and as you can see, here's the other side of the cut. We'll walk over there as well. And kind of get an idea of that as well. So once these guys made their way down in here, there was really no way out. So, and that's exactly what happened. The Union forces come up on them, basically like, hey guys, what's up? And uh, just slaughtered them. All right. So, again, there's so many monuments and 
things erected all over the place out here. You could spend a lot of time traveling, reading stuff, um, spending your whole day out here. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I don't, uh, I don't plan on doing that. So right now I just kind of want to document things as best I can enjoy myself because I'm on vacation. Uh, it's been a blast so far. Uh, just getting to Gettysburg, we actually stopped at uh, Flight 93 Memorial, which I honestly just didn't even think about. And I thought that was really cool once we found it. So uh, we did a couple lives out there. I took some video. Um, again, we, we got that at the tail end. So we were struggling to <clears throat> get video and stuff before they closed. This is the 147th New York Infantry 2nd Brigade 1st Division 1st Corps. Monument to them, I, I assume. So, come over here and look at this last one here before I check out because there is an info board over here that I want to show you. And then uh, we can go from there. So, this is the info board that I was referring to. And it specifically states uh, what I've been explaining to you guys, trapped in the cut. So, Lieutenant Colonel Rufus, and this is of Manassas, or Mahas, Manassas? Yeah, Manassas. That's what it looked like in 1869. Very similar to today. So again, I mean, they, they just come across it and bam, it was, it was like easy pickings for the union. This monument here. Hold on just a minute. For some reason, I'm really zoomed in on that. <laughs> I don't know how to unzoom it either. Okay. Whatever. My other camera is just kind of acting silly. So this is, you can't really read that. I am so sorry. Um, Brevet Major General James Samuel Wadesworth, United States Volunteers, 1807-1864, in command of 1st Division, 1st Army Corps at the Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 1863. Now, most of you don't know, uh, maybe some of you do, the Battle of Get Gettysburg was basically a three-day event. I know there was more that happened beyond that, but, you know, that's pretty much what it was. Um, the major portion was a three-day event. And just like with anything else, you got to kind of take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, you're getting whatever side of history that people decide to give you. Uh, me, personally, I have a, a issue with... Everything that I read about the Confederates, um, and I don't know why I feel this way. I just, uh, I just kind of bothers me because it's, it's bad information. Um, basically, everything that I read about the Confederates shows their flag as the battle flag. Well, the battle flag <coughs> is simply that it's a battle flag. <coughs> Nothing else. That's all it is. Is the battle flag. The area that uh, everybody or the the flag that everybody refers to as the confederate flag it is a confederate flag but it is a battle flag that is the flag that you're that you're seeing nine times out of ten so there's so many different flags and it, it really agitates me that even these you know people that go around today that are you know young kids and they want to be you know badasses or whatever they'll put a confederate flag on their truck or you know whatever Okay, whatever you're trying to support, I, I don't really understand, but okay, whatever. Um, nobody understands what that is, and it kind of drives me nuts. Just that one little piece right there just drives me nuts that nobody knows that there's different flags. Every state had a flag. Every division had a flag. And nine times out of ten, there were different flags for everything. Um, it's kind of how they signified everything on the field. You had battle flags, you had state flags, you had whatever flags. It was just kind of how they did it back then. 
So having said all that, guys, here, I think uh, I think this live has been going on for quite a while. And uh, I really appreciate everybody that has uh, stopped by <coughs> and just kind of checked everything out here. Again, I'm doing my best here to kind of show uh, what's out here. And I, it's so hard to explain to everybody and show you just what's here. It's amazing, at least to me. It's amazing to me. Everything that I see out here is very powerful. You get you get to walking out here, walking on the grounds. You get to just, you know, checking things out or driving through or whatever. And you get that overwhelming feeling in certain places. That's what I like to call being an American, because if you really feel it, you really feel it. Um, it's just amazing to me. I mean, this is this is uh, some place that I've been dying to go for years. I'm glad I got here. Um, my only regret is that I won't be able to get as much uh, investigation wise material that I thought that I would. Uh, I didn't realize it was this big. I mean, I knew it was a big battlefield, but the scope wasn't something that I understood until I got here. This place is so massive. <clears throat> I could literally spend a week or two here and probably not see everything. So it's amazing to me, but also I understand that, you know, I can only do so much. So having said all that, if anybody had stopped by, I appreciate you watching. If you watch later again, I appreciate you watching. Uh, Alex, thank you for helping me with the live stream here. I really appreciate your help uh, back home. Um, I'm going to be doing some sort of Facebook live tomorrow. I've been bouncing back and forth between all of them. So, uh, I've had a lot of fun here, guys. Hopefully just this little area here, you can kind of see the excitement in my voice and the pride that I have just by being here. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I did a respectful time type of a probe here for everybody. And, uh, again, I appreciate everybody stopping by. So Alex, take it from here, buddy. Guys, I really appreciate you stopping by. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, everything here seems pretty interesting. Um, I love Gettysburg and I love history. I just wish I'd be there, but again, unfortunately, I have to work. <laughs> Part of being American. So now um, that we've actually gone through and done this, I don't know if, if you wanted to um, tell you guys this uh me and my father actually has been talking about this for a while now i don't know if he said anything or not but do you want to no, do you want to tell them what we're doing or do you want to keep it a you, surprise you can go ahead, you can go ahead. I'll, I'll leave that up to you okay um i don't really want to say it too much because i don't know how this is really going to work out but um we actually have been in the works and talking about a podcast for EVPS Paranormal. Um, we've been talking about this for quite a while now, and we've seen so many things about Tales of the Unknown that we should really like take that in consideration and be like, how can we make Tales of the Unknown, how can we make EVPS Paranormal better as a whole? So exactly, we, we are talking about making a podcast that goes on any streaming platform you can think of YouTube, Amazon, Spotify, you name it. Yeah. And just to further, further solidify that um, we've been kind of teasing a lot of things coming for a while. And this is one of them that we were talking about. Um, we're also thinking about uh, just doing like little mini things like this more often because there's so many things that I feel like we miss out on and it's, it's because we are waiting for the whole group to get there and we don't have to have the whole group guys. It, it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, I know plenty of people that investigate by themselves. I know plenty of people that do a lot of stuff by themselves or they might link up with another group. And you know what? I think that's the most important thing right there. If you can link up with another group, help the community out, all that stuff and have it grow, you know, in that nature, that is, in my opinion, the best way to go with this. And yes, I'm wearing a Billy Butcher shirt. I love this shirt. <laughs> um, sorry, I had to point that out with my Gettysburg hat. Um, but yeah, I have to. I have to agree. The podcast is going to be, in my mind, fantastic. It's probably going to be something different than what you're used to hearing from us. Uh, we have a lot of ideas, and I don't know exactly how we're going to do that yet. We're still in the planning phases, so. Uh, yeah, that was that was something that was uh, a good idea, Alex. I think to share. So uh, 
yeah, that's that's something that uh, I think everybody's going to be happy with. Once we figure out how we want to do it, anyway. I mean, that's 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 the biggest thing here is anything that we do, we just got to kind of figure out how we want to approach it. Um, right. and uh, again, uh, all these little mini things like this that I'm doing here right now, and I'm just actually setting another recorder down here uh, because I'm I'm doing some uh, investigating myself, you know, for a separate video. So there's a couple different places I wanted to try to hit tonight. We're going to see what we find. Uh, but again, I'm out here by myself. Nobody from the group is here with me. Uh, my family's back at the hotel. So it is what it is. You know, I don't take that as a negative. I take that as, okay, wh wh what can we do? Just me. So uh, I encourage my entire group to do that. I encourage other groups to do that. If you ever need anybody to uh, help you out, you know, call us. We're, we're based out of Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we're willing to travel certain areas as long as we can get there. <clears throat> so that is that is something that uh, I want to try to have my group reach out. Um, honestly, my focus for a while has been to try to grow our YouTube channel and to try to get that big presence that um, I really wanted, you know, because I thought that's where I really wanted the group to go. And I still do. I wouldn't mind having the group, um, you know, be successful on YouTube. Um, but as of right now, uh, there's a lot of things I don't like about YouTube as far as like their ad structure and things like that. So I, I don't, I don't really promote it like I used to. Uh, I still have my RC channel that I do as well. And I do really well on that one, but you know, it's, it, it is what it is too. I don't, I don't do a lot of promoting on there. I think where the group's focus and where I'm going to drive the group now is more of a community type thing. I want to see everybody kind of getting linked up with other groups, uh, individualized investigations, uh, mini stuff. Mini stuff, I think, is perfect because there's so many things that we miss out on because it's not the Big Mackies or, you know, whatever. We, we still want to do this, yes, and we are still going to do this. Uh, but I think that there's too much emphasis, and I've even done it myself, on the bigger places and not enough on just the actual paranormal phenomenon that is going on all over the place so i think that's really important um me and alex have another big project in the works that we've been working on for a few years now um i'm not going to spill the beans on that one alex not yet uh, because we haven't really got past a certain point uh, but we do have another major project that we've been working on for a long time so uh once we get more details on that we might release some information on that so um there you go guys uh, that's kind of like where we're at right now and uh you know, again, I, th I thank everybody for stopping by today, tomorrow, later, whenever it is that you're going to stop by. So uh, I really appreciate it. And, you know, just to kind of close this off, um, feel free to, you know, if you have any questions, if you have anything paranormal related, if you have anything, you know, even going on, just let us know. We are here to investigate. We're here to find answers and the truth to better ourselves and it is that's right know, i i actually help sorry alex i didn't mean to step in i actually help out a lot of people they'll send me stuff on home investigations that they've done or hey can you help me figure out this file or whatever what's this look like and i run it through every image database that we have i run it through things to clean it up see if it's been doctored filtered whatever and I try to help groups out. I, I do that all the time. I do that at least a couple times a week uh, with my busy schedule on all the other things that I do. So, yeah, that's that's the, the focus that I think that we need to be focused on. And I think the group is all pretty much in agreeing the same thing. Um, my niece had actually moved to Texas and I was really feeling kind of sad about that for a while. But it's actually a good a good thing because there's things that she can do down there and we can support her from afar. That would be really cool. So. Hopefully we explore some more of that as well. And uh, same thing, you know, my daughter's talking about moving to a different state and Hey, that's, that's fine too. So, you know, just because we're spread out doesn't mean that we can't do anything. Just like right now, I got Alex helping me out with our live stream. Uh, again, I really appreciate it, Alex. I don't, there's no way I could carry the computer with me at the same time. So um, very interesting guys. Um, Alex, this is going to cut off here in a few seconds. So you might want to get going on the uh, outro there, buddy. Okay, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys.